In electrochemical cell A, we have carbon as the electrode, while in electrochemical cell B, we have copper as the electrode. The first question, 1.1, 1 .1, are A and B electrolytic or galvanic cells? It will be easy to see that A and B are electrolytic cells. Why do we say so? The presence of a power source and the mere fact that both electrodes are in one container. In a galvanic cell, the electrodes are in different containers and there is no power source. 1.2, which of the electrode P, Q, R, or T will show a mass increase? Write down a half reaction to motivate the answer. In both galvanic and electrolytic cells, we see a mass increase at the cathode. The only difference is that in a galvanic cell, the cathode is positive, while in an electrolytic cell, the cathode is negative. If you look at electrochemical cell A, Q is the negative electrode and T is the negative electrode. So that is where we expect to see a mass increase. So the answer here is Q and T. Why is there a mass increase at the cathode? That is because copper 2 plus is getting reduced to copper. More on this in the following question, 1.3. I'm going to explain why that is so. But for now, let's just leave it like that. Let's go to 1.3. So in 1.3, we're supposed to write down the name or formula of the product formed at electrode P. So let's go ahead and take a look at electrode P. P is the anode and Q is the cathode. So we have P being our anode and Q being the cathode. This is probably the most important part of uh, the video. This is exactly what I want you to learn. We know that N ions move to the anode. What are N ions? Negative ions. In our case, the negative ions we have is Cl minus. Why am I saying Cl minus? This is coming from CuCl2, the electrolyte we have. It is an aqueous solution and not liquid. So we also have OH- from H2O. And then the cat ions, positive ions, that will move to the cathode. We have Cu2 plus and H plus. The question here now is between Cl- and OH-, what undergoes oxidation? Cl- is going to undergo oxidation. The only way OH- would go under oxidation is if instead of using concentrated Cl2, we use dilute. And another special case is when we have SO4-2- or NO3- as the other anion. If this is the case, then OH- will get oxidized. But if these conditions are not satisfied, then Cl- or any other N ion will get oxidized. So at the anode, we have two Cl- getting oxidized to form Cl2 plus two electrons. The product that is formed at electrode P is chlorine gas or Cl2 if you decide to write the formula. Let's go ahead and do 1.3.2. We're looking for the name or formula of the product formed at electrode R. Electrode T is the cathode. So electrode R is our anode. What N ions are we going to have at the anode of electrochemical cell B? This is where it gets interesting and gets complicated. At the anode, we have copper as our electrode. So the species we're going to have is going to be copper, Cl- minus and OH-. Minus. The question really here is between copper and Cl-, minus, what gets oxidized? Copper is a stronger reducing agent compared to Cl-, minus, so copper will get oxidized. We're going to have copper getting oxidized to form copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons. So the product at electrode R is actually copper 2 plus and not chlorine. Now I want us to go back to 1.3.1. 1. 
If you look at 1.3.1, we talked about why Cl- gets oxidized at the anode. Let's talk about the cathode. What will get reduced between Cu2 plus and H plus? What is going to get reduced there? It's Cu to the 2 plus. Why do I say so? Cu to the 2 plus is less reactive compared to H plus. The question now is, how do I know which piece is less reactive compared to the other piece? Well, the description of the video, I'm going to put the species from the least reactive to the most reactive. So make sure that you check that out in the description.